Good afternoon and welcome once again to WebFG TV. Joining us today is Bill Kubart. He's Chief Economist at Markets.com. Bill, thank you very much for your time. Alex, thank you for asking me. Okay, last Thursday, Mark Carney, Dr. Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England, he delivers his speech at Mansion House. He seems to have surprised the markets. Yes, he did. Uh, I, I think what we have is, let's go back almost since the beginning of this year, excuse me, the market said, we hear what he's saying, but we don't believe it. I remember you told us We this. think that the market is much stronger, hmm. there's less slack, there's the concern about, I don't want to say housing bubble, I want to say housing market, okay? okay. Uh, it's, there was no inflation, so we started to see the RIBOR rates, the ONIA rates, and even the bond market and foreign exchange, basically mm -hmm. saying, we think, Worst case scenario, it'll be February of next year. But even then, in the early part of this year, some of the traders were implying that we could get a rate hike before year end. Okay. I remember you told us three, uh, about three months ago mm. already that the Bank of England was not telling us something. Yeah, it, it, no, they weren't not telling us something. I'm not sure Mark Carney didn't believe it. Uh, or if he did, and I mean, this could be quite interesting because this Wednesday, before the Federal Reserve, we get the NPC minutes. We and do? it's going to be, it may be the simple fact that he mentioned in the Mansion House speech, because he knows how they voted, okay? Mm -hmm. And we'll know that. Could we have okay, had right. some dissension? And you've had a couple of broad bent who's coming in as, as the new deputy governor. A couple of other people say, well, you know, sooner rather than later, but lower for longer, but sooner rather than later. In okay. Stage. What you're telling us brings two questions to my mind. First, markets now have brought forward the timing mm. of the first increase in bank rate. However, as of right now, or rather as of Friday, the Bloomberg consensus of economists, top economists, is still expecting an increase in bank rate in February, not in November. Well, well, Alex, it made me the loud noise here. You said economist. Well, Having been a trader and having worked for a number of major firms, mm. there's, there's, sometimes there's a slight, quote, difference of opinion right. because how the economist looks at it and how uh, a trader, and I mean, I, I won't mention any names, but this was years ago when I was at Bloomberg and one time, you know, I used to do what they call the big board. So we'd mm -hmm. get economic data and let's say we get GDP and this, that, right. and the other. I well, remember that. You have to make a, 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 an instant decision. And I remember I got, I got reprimanded after I went off air one time by one of the senior people at Bloomberg mm -hmm. who had been a previous economist. And I kept saying, I said, well, let's be honest. As a trader, I got 15 seconds to say, mm. is this bullish or bearish? I said, as an economist, you got 90 days for the first revision, second revision, and third revision, okay? Right. okay. And then also, let's see that there has been a shift in the minutes. The minutes reveal a, a shift, a slight shift. Sterling, should we expect, ought we to expect a, re a reaction in cable higher above 170? I think right now, now that we've almost, within a couple of pennies, twice in the past two weeks, breached 170. I think 170, 171, but again, like with the euro getting too strong, this is something that Mark Carney and the Bank of England have got to be concerned about because if, if 170, 172, 175, just to pick any number, this will kill what, what slow growth we may have, what budding growth in the export market, okay? Mm. And another thing is that, you know, we, it, it went to be a very interesting day. I mean, I think 10 o'clock in the morning we get the Bank of England minutes, and then of course it's 7 o'clock that night we get the statement from the FOMC. So if we find out that the Bank of England is now getting more up to date with interest rates going up before year end, and Janet Yellen and her team say, well, you know, steady as she goes, uh, mm -hmm. as the captain of the Titanic says, what iceberg? You know, so then is it a situation, yeah, then we could see 170, 172 by, by Thursday morning. Okay. You personally, you expect to see some sort of shift in the minutes? No, I don't. You, you, you mean for the Bank of England? Yes. Yes, I do, okay. okay. I, I would expect a unanimous decision, mm -hmm. both to keep rates as they are in QE, but, and I say but, well, Alex, uh, I will vote for this, but I feel that mm -hmm. I'm concerned about this and I'm concerned about that, excuse me, and most recently, 
you know, we have the incoming deputy governor, Broadbent, saying Indeed. he's concerned about the, the housing bubble or whatever you want to. But, 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 but in reference to that, let's go back to the simple fact that interest rates will start going up, whether they're November or February. Hmm. You know, but they will be lower for longer because one of the things that you've got now versus, I guess, pre Lehman in 2008, the number of mortgages, okay, yes. that, that are, are, are fixed rate, mm -hmm. okay, or even floating rate, that they start going up. Now, they have to go probably up one or one and a half. One and a half points before, okay. but you'll, you'll start seeing people then will be severely squeezed because even now inflation not very high. But I mean earnings now are only 0.9 percent. So the fact is, if you're having to pay another couple of hundred pounds a month mm -hmm. for your mortgage and you're not you're not even getting a one percent pay rise, you know, indeed, consumer-led so, recovery, no, we won't have it. So one of the key variables to watch is mortgage rates. Yes, very 100, much. So. 150 basis points. Well, I think probably, and I mean I think. I would not be surprised. I mean, as you saw just in the last two weeks, both RBS and Lloyd's now have, have you know, you get a what, half a million pound mortgage, but only four times earnings. Now, I would expect maybe you see a few more banks saying that, or by saying, uh, we are reevaluating, and the simple fact is our tracker mortgage now, or such and such is now. Look for the, look for the base rate for mortgages now mm -hmm. to, to, to start rising. Okay. Changing topics, volatility. What? <laughs> exactly. I, I can't hear. What did you say? <laughs> What's happened to it? It's, it's it evaporated. Disappeared, yes. Okay. For the simple reason is that right or wrong for the last four years, we've sort of known what's going to happen. Hmm. You know, there'd be no interest rate rises. How low can interest rates go? And, and so therefore, what you started to see was in the bond market, you, you had had a major shift into treasuries. I mean, four years ago we were talking about Grixit. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Spanish Greek yields were like twenty percent. You know, in, in, in double digits. You know, with the, the Treasury ten year was still trading below four percent. So you saw a massive flow into that a safety mm -hmm. rate. And then of course you saw mo money moving into uh, equity market. But you've got to realize, okay, anybody who has a money market fund anywhere in the world, you know. Okay. I mean, your real rate of return is negative. So essentially, there's a blanket of liquidity from the central banks yes. just keeping it down. Yes. And also, it'll be interesting to see how this, you know, this this LTRO from uh -huh. because even now, some of the stuff that started to, to flow off. And this is one of the things: is the ECB then going to start changing the, the agreement? Because before, people then were just taking the money. Now, that's why this negative deposit rate will it have any kind of effect? For the simple fact as well. You know, maybe we, we're not going to borrow from the ECB and then just sort of leave it there because we'll have to pay them for it. So maybe then what we have to do is, is lend. Uh -huh. So, okay. Over the next three to six months, I know this is near impossible to predict. <laughs> do you think we might get some sort of mean reversion volatility, a certain spike higher? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we will get that until, one, we get the first rate Move from the Fed by, no, by the Bank of England. Okay, and we have a change in attitude from Janet Yellen to, from modest to moderate growth to the simple fact is saying we're concerned about inflation or the PCE deflator, which is mm -hmm. there. We're, we're concerned about inflation, and we see the the slack in the U.S. economy disappearing. So until we have the first real move mm -hmm. by the Bank of England and a change in position. Okay. It's just like if we get the same decision by the Federal Reserve, steady as she goes, another 10 billion, believe me, that could have a negative effect on the dollar. We already started to see that move yesterday in the euro. Got back to 135.50, feeling, hey, well, you know, Fed's going to be steady as she goes. Retail sales were, were that week. So, so that'll be quite interesting. I mean, the market, if the market was surprised, with Mark Carney, the market would go ballistic if Janet Yellen said, "Man, we are bullish on the U.S. economy. Be prepared." You know, right. all of a sudden you can see the dollar you know, soar against the euro, against sterling, feeling that the Fed is truly realistic. But, the, but the, the the bond market is not okay. The only move we had back in the bond market this week was the ten-year getting back to two sixty-seven. But that was the geopolitical risk. And the simple right. fact is, people were selling treasuries to buy Spain, Italy, Portugal. I mean, you know, just, crazy. Yes. Okay, volatility. Yeah. It's a measure of risk. Yeah. 
it's supposedly supposed to incorporate future risk, risk going sure forward, yeah. but in reality it's implied volatility, it's yes. historical risk. Yes, exactly right, okay. So, going forward, people extrapolate from the past to the future, unexpected events, there might be one now, a wild card, sure. Iraq. But the interesting thing, you know, you talk about actual and implied, mm. you know, as human beings, forget the financial markets, do we continue to sort of make the same mistakes, whether we're mowing our lawn or whether we're feeding our roses or we're doing this, you know, I'm never going to do that again. Well, <laughs> how many times, oh, I did it again and I did it again. You know, we're creatures of habit. True. And, and another thing that, that we also is, if you look at positioning in, in the stock or bond or foreign exchange market, mm -hmm. people make either less profit or more losses by shorting a position, because we as human beings are basically positive, okay? I mean, the simple fact is, as Dolly Parton says, you know, if you like the rainbow, you got to put up with the rain, okay? And, and, and how many people do you know, well, it's raining today, oh, well, it's going to be raining tomorrow, rainy today. You know, you know, it's going to be better tomorrow, okay? And it is, okay? So I think, so, so we as human beings are basically positive. Fascinating. Okay. Uh-huh, okay. And as far as Iraq, are we optimistic also on Iraq? I think I am, because I think you've got a situation here where if we're concerned about the oil, hmm. we know that Saudi can open the spigots a little more. And then, of course, we've got the Sunnis, which are the majority in Saudi, and the Shias, which are the majority in Iraq. And, and I don't need to tell you, you know, they've been at loggerheads for 2,000 years. Also, maybe I'm being really silly, could all of a sudden Iran come into the picture and say, hey, come on boys, let's calm down here, you're our neighbors here. Mm. And one of the things, again, we talked about this earlier, you know, Turkey has taken the real brunt of this with, with you know, the Iraqi refugees, Iranian refugees in Syria. Now remember, I, I don't fully understand, I, I haven't read the NATO convention, mm. but remember, NATO has to adhere to any complaint by one of their members. And if Turkey says, hey guys, you know, we need a little, little help here. Again, NATO would have to support one of their own. Not against maybe Iraq or Iran, et cetera, mm -hmm. but they would have to protect one of their own to, to balance out or control or try to calm the situation. And here. you believe that would help to stabilize the situation? Yes, I think it would. Although, as you've seen, I mean, we've lost, what, five bucks this week in, in uh, oil. oil. Goals up twenty-four dollars in a week, up to twelve seventy-two. You know, which is well above my twelve fifty. <laughs> so rates. NATO yeah. might do something militarily. The U.S. will not. No. Uh, yeah, they, they may right? put. I, I don't. You know, the guys with the blue helmets and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Sort of. Because Peace they won't go into Iraq, mm -hmm. but they would reappear. But remember also, this look. You know, from, from a U.S. standpoint and from a U.K. standpoint. We, this was from the Ukraine. There, 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 there are a lot of sort of war games going on in Poland, okay? Well, because they start sort of war games in, in Turkey. Now, this is just, you know, maybe off the cuff. But, but I have to feel that, that, you know, there will be no troops on the ground, either from the U.S. or the U.K. Hmm. But do we get a situation where, with, with, it took a little while, with the globe or market going against Russia and doing the sanctions. Well, you know, when the, the Russian MySex went down and, and, and it was costing Russia a fortune to support the ruble, but the same thing happened, in, you know, in Iran. But, but I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised. And we were talking about Kurd, the Kurds. Well, you know, if we're concerned about the oil, Saudi can provide the extra oil, and, and Kurd, you know, could do that, okay? If, if Iran could, you know. So you essentially believe it'll blow over, more or less? Yes, I think it will, okay? okay. And then a very key variable, yields on U.S. 10-year treasuries. Yeah. Extremely important for the U.S. economy, yeah. for global equities. Where do you see those heading uh, towards well, year end? Well, you know, I hope Bill Gross is not listening. <laughs> I mean, I, I could see him. We start having a moderate recovery. The market truly believing that it'll be lower for longer or slower, slower, slower. And, you know, a risk factor. We could start seeing safe haven buying in the treasury. I mean, I, I, I could see 
two and three eighths, two forty five, something like that. Okay. Again, I know right now we're dealing with with a with, with a, a, a very important technical level, the one hundred two hundred day moving average, uh -huh. two sixty seven and then two sixty three. Okay. Right. Now we closed yesterday at two sixty. So then it's going to be a question. that goes back to your your volatility. Well, there is no volatility. So, you know. But even even look at the, the stock market. You saw how the stock markets collapsed on Thursday. Well, the U.S. recovered almost all of that just yesterday. Okay. So essentially, it seems like markets, Iraq will blow over, and we can continue to be on a steady course, steady as you go. Yeah, I think so. As long as central banks don't start acting. And, and, you know, I don't think they will, because I mean, we know what the Bank of England is going to do, okay? They're going to, they will be the first G4 to start raising rates. We know that the ECB has already told us they've got more ammunition, okay? Uh, you know, if the euro trades below 135, it starts to get, to the, you know, they'll come in and do it again because they've got to get, the, they've got to get this currency down in the low 130s. And I mean, most of the people I talk to are still feeling 130, 131 is a reasonable, maybe, no, maybe not, Let's say, I'm looking at 128, 12 months from now. Okay. We may have a struggle over the next six months, okay? Mm. We may, 132, 133 or something, just because of, of the vacillation, whether it be Iraq or who knows what, what situation we don't even know about right now. Mm. But it is headed lower. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, de definitely, okay? I've been wrong for the last two years. So, so third time lucky, right? Like my marriage. <laughs> Certainly, I certainly, I hope you are third time lucky. I'm sure all of our viewers are, are hoping the best. Yeah, for me you. too. Um, Bill Keyword, Alex. Chief Economist, Markets.com. Thank you very much. For thank you. you very much. Thank you. And as always, thank you very much for your time. And until next week, that's all from all of us here at Weather GTV. Goodbye.